All right. So, hey, all, my name is Dustin Schaefer. Um, the good chances we've met in some capacity. Maybe you've seen a video um, of ours or you've been on a Zoom or training, but I just want to say first off, say hi. Uh, as you all know, I, I don't do a lot of like weekly, weekly trainings continuously. Um, I don't do that because the company has so many good trainings. Our team leaders have a lot of good trainings. And one of the things that I'm always cautious of is, is people's time. You know, when people get started in this is that usually they're starting part time. <laughs> Usually they're just getting warmed up. What's up, Derek? And what happens is, is that um, they spend so much time learning is that they're not doing. Um, so it's, there's always this kind of love hate with, for me, with how much, how many Zooms and trainings to be on at the same time, how much action to take. And so what I want to do is we're going to do this each week for at least 30 days, if probably a long time through the summer. Um, and the idea is, is to keep the calls relatively short. Um, bring on some different voices to give some insights and trainings. We have lots of people that have had a lot of great success. And so it's a way to let them train on some things that's working for them right now. Also, maybe a little bit of inspiration. But I want to do is I really want to show people the simplicity of our business model. And I think once you understand the simplicity of it all, then it just comes down to um, time, patience of going through the process. And so um, this is recorded, so you can definitely check this out, um, and I'll record each week, and I'll be sending them out uh, as, as needed uh, for individuals. But I just wanted to do a quick introduction because um, I think sometimes what happens is we get going 100 miles per hour. We don't realize where people are coming from. So to give you a little backstory on, on how I got involved in this, um, I want to take a moment to, to do that. Uh, and most people don't know my whole story. Some of you are learning it recently, but... When I started with Prove It, it actually happened about three years before I started with Prove It. I went on a honeymoon with my wife, and this was back in 2012-ish, and I, we were in Europe. We planned this huge trip, and I was not having a, a bit of fun. I was stressed to the gills, worried about how much money we were spending. I mean, y'all were thinking about this. We're in Paris. We're in Bali. Or not Bali. We were in Basel, Switzerland. We were in Northern Italy. We were in like Como. I mean, the most beautiful places that people want to go. I'm not having fun, no smiles. I'm worried about money. I'm stressed all the whole time. My wife goes, what's wrong? I, I tell her, oh, nothing. I'm just, you know, got to get settled in. It's a little bit of adjustment for me. Y'all know relaxing is not easy for me too. So that, that's, a, that's a part of it. And uh, the reality was, is that I, I, I kept counting how much money we were spending and how much money I wasn't making because I was trading in, in my career. I didn't have vacation money. If I didn't work, I didn't make money. And this went on for another three days. Finally, my wife's like, what's wrong with you? And we got to fix it. This is our honeymoon. We're not having any chance. But she was having fun. I just wasn't. And the last three days of our honeymoon, um, I decided to finally have fun. And I did. I had a good time. Came home and I spent three years trying to figure out how to make extra income for myself and my family. And I investigated a lot of things. I investigated um, franchising. I did. I actually spent almost $100,000 learning how to do internet marketing. And you know, just so you know, I didn't have $100,000. $50,000 we put on credit cards, on multiple credit cards to learn it. True story. I made $1,275 $1 in that journey for three years. My wife was our sole breadwinner. I was working and doing my training and stuff, getting ready to relocate my entire practice. I felt like I was failing as a father. I felt like I was failing as a provider to my family. That was my real story before Prove It. Got to Southern California. I met a guy in birthing class. He introduced Prove It to me. Of course, I started more gigs. I was working, doing my, doing my, my, my practice. I had another online business that I was still trying to make money from, the internet marketing side. And then I met a cardiologist that we were going to work a project together and more time commitment for me. It was going to take me another 10, 15 hours a week to work with him to make extra money. And we had our newborn at home. We had our special needs brother-in-law just move in with us. And my, I met Michael Ruther, Rutherford in birthing class. And that's when Prove It was introduced to me. So you could say I was looking for an opportunity to change my life. I was looking for a financial win. I was looking for more. When I met Michael, after almost nine months of meeting him before we could actually get ketones in our hands, I, I asked him, I go, hey, how can I play a role in this? What can I do to help? Is there an opportunity for me? I didn't know it was network marketing. I didn't know it was community-based marketing. No idea. I go, but is there something I can do? And he goes, well, he goes, yeah, he goes, you can do this with me if you want. I go, but what is it? Like, how do I, how do I participate? He goes, it's network marketing. And I'm like, sweet. I was excited. True story. He goes, really? Like, he was shocked that I responded the way I did. 
And the reason why is I'd been investigating network marketing for three years. I looked into it saying, listen, I can do this. I can do this. Why? Because I can still do my practice, but everything else I ever chose to do was all on my shoulders. It was all about how much work I could do, how much time I can put into it, how much financial investments I had to make. I had to make hundreds of thousands of dollars to do a franchise. And I go, it was going to take me, true story, we were going to buy three franchises. It was going to be two plus years to get a return on my investment. Hard work, 14, 15 hour days, two plus years. So he goes, well, how much money do you want to make? I go, $5,000 a month. He goes, awesome. He goes, you help me lose 50 pounds. I'll help you make $5,000 a month. He goes, how fast do you want to do it in? I go, two years. I want to make $5,000 a month in the next two years. He's like, okay, we can do that. So I wanted to tell you this story because since prove it, obviously I've now transitioned out of that career. I do this full time. My wife, after three years has stepped away from law and now she works and she gets to, she works with me, but she's more of a leadership role for me. She, she hits me and tells me what to do. It's really what she does, uh, which I need by the way. Um, but she's been able to spend time and, and, and participate in our kid's life because of this opportunity. It grew into more than $5,000 a month. But I want to tell that story is because a lot of times we, we see people like myself or Michael Rutherford or you see a Lynn or you see a Christine or you see a Kate and you see these people that are like, they seem like they have it all figured out. They seem like they have it all together. The reality is, is that's not where they started, right? And that's probably not where they're done. They wouldn't be on here right now if they were done if that makes sense. They're still pursuing something. And, and sometimes we just want to see the story of what's in front of them or what they've went through to realize that they're just real people. They put their pants on just like everybody else. I put my pants on one leg at a time, Louise. But once I put them on, I go to work. Um, I don't know if that's how the quote goes, Louise. Uh, you can put it in the chat, but we're working on a new quote. Um, <laughs> so I want to share that with you because who's going to win if you want to make this a competition? If you want to win and, and, and improve it, it's who tells their story to more people as the winner. And then becoming transparent on your story. We all have great stories inside of us. But guess what, guys? I hid behind my story for a long time. I didn't tell the real story. Meaning, Michael used to tell my story for me, and I just let him tell my story. But the reality was that that's not why I started. That's why he started. He was stoked I was on ball because I love ketones. But... What I want to do is I want to take a few minutes, and if you want to participate in this, I want you to raise your hand up for me, okay? We talk a lot about attraction, and I'm not going to you raise your virtual hand if you don't mind, but if you want to participate, I want you to raise your virtual hand, okay? Virtual hand meaning the one on the little screen here. Um, so I'm a big fan of jumping both feet in. I, I'm doing this, this men's only core four challenge, 28 day challenge. And if you're a dude and you want in, get in. If you're a lady, you want your dude in, get them in. Chad's in by the way, Jennifer. Um, and some guys, my friends, good friends of mine, they're like, well, what is it? What is it? I go, you're not ready. I go, if you have to ask what it is, you're not ready. I go, dude, you've trusted me this far. Just go. Like, let's go. Let's just go and, and do the best you can. So Raise your hand if you want. I'm going to call on some people that haven't uh, that I that haven't uh, probably done this before. But I want to do is I want to start practicing our story because we talk a lot about attraction and we're going to talk about that a little bit at the end. But it's really attract. Tell your story, maybe more than once, and assume that nobody knows your story, Carrie. Right? Oh, I shared it online. They didn't listen. They didn't hear it. But yet you did. That's good. So always assume that people don't know your story. So I'm going to have, starting with Miss Carrie Clark, going to have her on mute. And I'm doing this as a training at the same time as a little, as a little test for Carrie. So Carrie, I'd like for you to tell me your story. And if you don't mind, um, I'm going to, I may interrupt you at some points in there if, if I feel like it needs to be, but I want you to tell me your story. Um, sure. So my story is that um, I have lived a pretty fantastic life. And as far as having great parents, had a great childhood, didn't really have anything um, traumatic happen to me. But I saw a friend of mine that had all of this energy on Facebook. And she was doing all the things that I thought I should be doing and wasn't, and I had to question myself, why am I not so upbeat and doing things? Because I have no reason not to. Um, I also had just retired. So in my mind, I had 
everything. I was actually young. I retired at 48. So I felt that I had everything that I needed. Well, obviously I didn't because I was staying in bed every morning until nine, 10 o'clock in the morning. And I was watching cat and dog videos and keeping up with the Kardashians. And my friends were the desperate housewives or whatever they're called. And um, I had to take a real hard look at myself. So I reached out to her and she, I purchased a trial pack from her and I was a day three-er where I took it. And the energy that I had, um, was amazing. It got me out of bed. I now wake up at 6 30, 7 o'clock in the morning. And I want to get up at 6 30 and 7 o'clock in the morning because I start to do things. And I can say that when I started, I was at a very happy time in my life. But once I started doing it, I kind of noticed it about day seven that I was almost a hundred percent happier than I was just seven days ago. And I couldn't explain it. So that's basically why I started awesome. <laughs> and kept and keep doing it. So what I, what I love about your story is that you're transparent at the beginning, talking about like, yeah, life was actually pretty good, although I wasn't living to my potential, right? Mm -hmm. I love how you set that up. The question I have is that was a portion of your story, yet you've been yeah. gone to Louisville, Kentucky. You mm -hmm. show up and go to meetings when I come to town. Why all the other stuff? What's the rest of it? Where's the next part of the story? Can you kind of go to the next step? Like, why did you become a promoter? What yeah. does that mean to you? And where, where maybe you going next with it? Absolutely. So the next thing, so once I started feeling- Actually, I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to let you finish that in a second. Here's something important, y'all. When you tell your story, too many people are telling their product story and stopping. Mm -hmm. They just, they go to that one portion and they stop. And they don't add the rest of the story in. It's like going into the going into the restaurant and you're only getting the uh, appetizer menu and you don't give them anything else. So what happens is people don't know there's more to it. Well, they should have saw me at Louisville talking about all this stuff and going crazy online. No, they're busy with their own lives. You got to tell them. You got to tell them. You got to let them know that there's something else going on. If we don't, then it's our fault to assume that they know better. Okay. So I wanted to just bring that up for everybody as you're telling your story. We got to get, we got to get good at telling the whole story within a reasonable time. I'm, I'm a talker. So I, I tend to take a long time. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that, so I started feeling fantastic. And my first thought in my head was I have got to get everybody I know on this. And if I don't tell people about it, that's bad on my part because there's no reason why I feel this good and not everybody else. So I started talking to family members. Then I reached out to Tiffany again and said, I'm talking to family members. I want in. What, what do I need to do to promote this? And really in my mind, it wasn't to make money. It's because I wanted to reach the masses and I just wanted to know more about it. And then also, I shouldn't say a selfish level, but kind of a, I really needed a tax write-off because my husband and I um, both retired and I was like, this would be a perfect tax write-off. My accountant is yelling at me. I need something else to write off. So I, that's pretty much why I started the, um, the promoter part of it. But it expanded way past that. Because once I started and got into the community and just felt um, the self-growth that personally I didn't think I needed. And wow, was I wrong? Because I went to the more event and... Um, I included my daughter who became a promoter as well. All three of my daughters are promoters. So that started that level of it. And she went to more with me and I saw her and myself, but especially her just transform in front of my eyes with issues that she was holding on to. And we came back on fire and we just started hit the ground running, um, spoke to my mom, my mom. Um, I said, you have got to do core four because I met Derek, personally got to hug and squeeze him. And it was amazing, the transformation, just seeing him in that moment of winning $10,000, came home and said, you're doing this. And of course, my mom, 76 years old, was, what do you mean? I'm, I'm doing what now? I already had her on ketones and she's feeling pretty good, but I, I'm like, you're doing this. We're doing core four. And that same day, we went and saw you at Boomtown because we had a very mini um, event and brought a couple of people. And 
I believe, I think we talked to you and said, hey, guess what she did this morning? She joined Core 4 and you validated that for her with stories of with your mom. And we went hardcore on that, took our videos. She was doing it every day. She was walking every day. She um, continued to grow as did I, because I was doing Core 4 right along with her. My husband, my kids, my grandkid, my grandson drank some. I mean, it's just it's generation after generation after generation and it all started with me just reaching out and talking to one person and it has affected friends and family forever it's just amazing and bonus with all that hard work miss bonnie mattson my mom super proud of she won the core four challenge and won ten thousand dollars and received it yesterday i have oh. a picture <laughs> Oh, well, that's really cool. I want everybody to take a note here. Um, one of the things, uh, Joe Rogister, if you're on here, I love you. Um, if, whoever knows Joe, give him some love for me. Joe's always like, Dustin, you got to shoot things shorter. You got to shoot things shorter. And I think you just got to feel more when you share the story. Um, I'm going to say that again. Um, how many of you have heard, you got to have, what's your elevator pitch? I actually have people ask me, hey, say your elevator pitch. I go, if that's what you're looking for, you're looking for the wrong thing. I go, there isn't an elevator pitch. This is real people with real stories. And doesn't mean you have to talk for 45 minutes on your journey, most importantly, the past. Um, but the reality is, is Carrie, what I, what I, what I want to share about your story is it took five minutes to tell your story. But guess what? Every minute of that story mattered. You didn't have to explain ketones to me. You didn't have to explain prove it to me. You tell that story to enough people. Now, we do have to attract, and we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. But if you tell that story to enough people, what ends up happening is they want, they want a piece of whatever pie that is. They want the transformation. They want that energy. They want, the, like, they're going to be hung up on that one thing. You all know you tell the whole story for five minutes and they ask you a question. You're like, you asked me about energy. Like, that's what, at the moment they're in, Carrie wasn't ready for the rest. She had to feel better first. Does that make sense? But the story allows people to plug in what they can pull the part out of that of what matters to them. That's why the story matters. You can tell that to a hundred people. You're going to get some people go, Hey, how would I get that energy? You're going to get some people like, how do I win $10,000? You're going to get some people like, how do I get a tax rate off? Does that make sense? So these stories are really important. I want you to write this down. Facts tell and stories sell. It's how many people can you tell your story to, but I don't want you to hold back from the whole story. Now it takes a little practice to, to learn your story. Some people, uh, Kate, do me a quick favor. She's the only one I know that'll do it for sure on here. Uh, if you can, tell me your story with no emotion. You're muted. All right, you hear me? Yep. So Kate used to be notorious for telling her story with no emotion. Like you're almost celebrating the fact that she's going to lose her house. <laughs> you're like, wait a minute. Go ahead. Yeah. So you want me to do it with no emotion? No emotion. Yes. Okay. Um. So in December, after I started drinking ketones, I started in October, um, we received some papers from the mailman delivering foreclosure papers on our house. And so I knew at that moment, I had to make $2,000 to save our house. So I joined the team and kind of went to work and took the coaching and did the things and was able to save my house, um, and yeah, I was able to save the house, pull it out of foreclosure. Um, within six months, I was credit card debt free. And it's just been a really great blessing. Awesome. I appreciate you sharing it that way. <laughs> so Kate, for a long time, and the reason why I'm using this as a contrast is you saw Carrie got into the emotional side of how she felt in the phases of this journey. You can feel her emotions and her excitement around that. Now, Kate's really excited about what she does. She loves this so much. But the story became kind of the elevator pitch, right? And maybe that's fine if you meet somebody in the elevator, but if you actually want to build a relationship with them, you got to kind of get to the meat a little bit. You got to let them know where you're at and how you're feeling. And that's a lot of vulnerability. Um, so that creates a lot of vulnerability. And let me just ask this question in the chat. Um, I wasn't vulnerable or pain of my story. No, she wasn't. She, it was just like a breeze over of her story. And something that Lynn and I know we've worked on a lot too. And now some of you remember, Carrie wasn't in a horrifically bad place. Does that make sense? She wasn't like she was struggling with life. There was something more, 
but she was curious and then but the motion part of it is what's going to make her share that story so well it's what's going to attract people to ask more questions right and so i i want i want to say this because i, I think it's important that we allow ourselves to share transparently through our heart um and we allow our story to be our story and and you can tell it and here's the thing is nobody will judge you for your story they will judge you for not telling it, but they won't judge you for telling your story, the whole story, at least nobody that you ever want to talk to, uh, if that makes sense. <laughs> if they do, you don't want to talk to that person anyway. So it's just easy. Um, but Kate, I appreciate it. Carrie, I appreciate that. And for time's sakes, we won't be able to go into a lot more stories, but I'm going to give you all a challenge this first week. Um, and then I want to do a little summary of these calls that we're going to be doing is that our, our, our business is simple. Right. We all know or are aware of ACE, attract, connect, and roll. Um, we all are aware of our Go Challenge, Go Pro, Go MVP, Go All Star. Right. This is the simplicity of our business model. Um, I had a friend of mine. She she asked me, uh, and she might maybe on here. She goes like like she, she asked. She goes, "What's the onboarding? Like, what's prove its onboarding system? What's our systems?" And it was funny because it was a great question. I actually loved the question. And the reality is, is that I've been onboarding on to prove it for seven years. It doesn't ever stop. Onboarding is just where you find the information. The key is, is that some people need more of that. Dana can tell me that, tell, tell you the girl yesterday needed a lot of information. Some people need less. So onboarding is a giving people the ability. And maybe next week we'll talk about a little bit of what I would do on a, when I onboard somebody. Basically, it's the pulse. That's really it. And then talk to them and then give them the information they need at the time they need it. But what's really important is to put them into action and get them to tell their story. Put them into action, get them to tell your story. Derek, um, how many times, every time Derek has a question for me, how many times, what do I tell you to say back to him? You, you know, hey, Dustin, this person asked about this, this, this. I go, what do you, what, do you, what should you, I go, and you go, what do I say? I goes, I always say the same thing. I'm going to tell your story to him every time. It's all I say is tell your story to them. Because his story is good enough. Everybody on here's story is good enough. And if if you if you have other people's stories, you might tell somebody else's. As as Carrie found out, I told my mom's story to her mom, right? But at the end of the day, I could have just told my own story and it probably been good enough, right? So my challenge for everybody on here is this: is to tell your story. Now, this is what I found is that. It's not easy to tell your story. And there's a few things I wanted again to give you, uh, uh, um, I want to give you some insight on. Number one is you have to tell your story from, you have to practice your story, meaning, meaning like if you don't tell it, you don't practice it, it'll never, it'll never happen. You're never, you're not going to get in this place. I watched Lynn try to tell her story over and over again, and she's still kind of honing it in to, 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 to her story, right? To, to what does she want to vulnerability, vulnerably share to people? Um, selling ketones is one thing, right? But if you share your story, you're going to connect to people and connecting to people is how we build our business. Okay. And it is so, and so, and so important. So what I want you to do, this is your challenge for the week is 10 times. You're going to tell your story to 10 times to at least five different people. Now here's the easy part is you can do it with your own team. And I encourage at least five of those people, you do it to somebody that you know, that are improve it so they can critique you. So, um, more of you more often in front of more people. That's exactly right. Uh, Kate and Luis stole your quote, by the way. So we're going to give you credit when we post it. Um, uh, but tell that, tell your story to 10 people. I don't care if you tell it to me. Um, it's funny because I'll get on these Zoom sometimes and I'll ask people to tell their story. And usually one or two people ever do it to me. They usually ever tell me their story. It can be a couple of voice memos. Now do it through voice memo, please. Don't do it through written text. Do it through voice memo. Speak it because you can speak emotions. You can't write emotions. It's well, unless you're really good, but I can't write emotions. So speak your emotions. I want to feel Carrie showed you she how she felt when she was not. You could hear through her voice how she felt when she thought she had it all, but she really didn't. She saw somebody else had more. And then you could hear through her voice when she wanted to share with other people. Her expression shifted. And Dana, yes, you can take a few days to do yours because she can't talk. <laughs> so here's your here's your journey. If it's more business, that's fine. You could say, I, I joined this. I joined Prove It for a business, right? I was strapped financially. I fell in love with the product, right? That's okay. Just tell your story congruently to you. And I promise you, it'll work very, very, very well. So the other, so five, five people, did I say five people or 10 people? I change it. 
You're going to do it. You're going to tell your story 20 times. Five of the people can be somebody improve it. You can do it twice to them. All right. Five of the people can be improve it. So somebody that you know, they, they can critique it and ask them, hey, what's your advice? And if there's no emotion, tell them that. You sounded that you didn't, there's no emotion in this. Let's go. I watched Cameron Moss, literally true story. Cameron, if you're on, I love you. I watched Cameron Moss tell her story about she had a new salon in um, Clouston, Florida. The way she said her story, you would have applauded. Yet she made zero money in her business. They were, she was like, she was telling it in such a like uplifting, positive way. You got done, she got done telling the story. Everybody's like, well, that sounds amazing. What she was trying to tell them is that she was actually working her butt off. She was, she was being recognized as the top salon in town and she made no money. She was trying to say it that way, but she, she's conditioned herself to always say it with such positivity and enthusiasm. I'm like, you, we have to ground yourself a little bit. Like, like that's, that wasn't the point of the story. Cause you could tell that to a lot of people. They're going to say, well, you're amazing when you came in and that's why you're amazing now. No, the reality was is she wasn't. So tell it to five people, ask for critiques. And then I want you to go five friends, five loved ones, five customers, five people that are at least five people that are in your life. And I want you just to say this. Hey, have I ever told you my prove it story before? Have you, have I told you my whole story? And here's the funny thing is y'all, I'm, I'm going to tell you a secret is even though you have, they'll almost always say, I don't think so. Or they'll say, I think you have, well, let me share it with you anyway. And I want you to practice this. Because I promise you, the more you tell this story to more people, the more people that will join you in this journey, okay? And people go, well, you, nobody wants to connect. I promise you, you tell your story enough people, you'll get them to connect. You'll be able to do all phases to this, to this journey. So that's your challenge. 20 times, tell your story. You have one week to do it. I would do it in the next 24 hours. I promise you it works. Go to your brother. Hey, bro, I just can you do me a huge favor? I'm working on telling my story. Can I tell you my story um, since I joined Prove It? Yes. Okay. And y'all, I do the same thing. Derek, how many times did I practice my story on you? I'm literally go, Derek, I need to practice my story. Can I tell? I just kept saying it to him. Why? Well, because A, it works, but B, I wanted to get better at it. Right. I wanted to get better at telling my story more transparently and vulnerably that I, how I really felt before I started to prove it, not how I wanted people to see how I was. And to me, this is really important. And, and Carrie, we couldn't have used your story any better because she was not financially losing her house. She wasn't in a horrific place. Her story is really powerful in that man. And guess what? Everybody that just heard, heard Carrie's story, you can tell her story to people that are maybe financially doing really well. That's crazy. I just heard of a, this, heard about this lady. She's like, she was retired at 48. She thought she had everything and she tried our product and it literally gave her this boost of energy. Now like this girl wants to go conquer the world. It's a pretty amazing story. You can tell her story in a summary, in a summary version of it all. So, all right. Last thing I want to talk about before we go um, is number one. No, or last thing I want to talk about before we go is this is you're going to hear a lot in your prove it journey. It's patience it's consistency, um, it's attraction. And those are all true. Um, but what makes people patient, and what makes people consistent, and what makes people become really good at attracting is a purpose that they're doing this for. So take a minute, if you don't know already, why are you really doing this, right? Carrie's probably still finding some of her why, but I can tell you that her mom getting healthier is a big motivator. Her daughter's Stepping into their own greatness and mama be able to mom show, mama be able to show them the way is a very inspiring thing. It may not be about all the money. It may not be about all those things. It might just be something really personal to her. But I want you to really take a few minutes and figure out why are you really doing this? And that is going to be the number one reason you're consistent. It's the number one reason you're going to be patient in this. And it's the number one reason you'll share your story to more people. Um, now that's not always easy to find. If you don't know your why, that's okay. Um, stick around, you'll find it. Um, and that's a, that's a dance. In the meantime, stay plugged in as much as you can until you can find more of those ideas. And sometimes the why is something simple. We have a, a lady that wanted a, a, a cow and she was very adamant. True story. She wanted a cow. Guess what? She got her cow. We had no lady, uh, in Utah that wanted a, 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 a heater for her, for her house. She never had a new heater in her entire life ever. She was like 60 years old, never, ever had a new heater in her house. That was her why. So it doesn't have to be change the world. It doesn't have to be 
anything crazy. It could be something that you've always wanted and you're willing to go do the work to get it. Now, once she got the heater, here's the secret. She had to go find another thing to go after. Otherwise she was going to stop. Once she got the cow, she did. And she actually stopped. Once she got the cow, she didn't want anything else. She didn't go after anything else. So she slowed down and she stopped. So that's okay. She got her cow. She won her, she won her race. She went and did what she needed to do here. And that's awesome. And we love her for that. If she wanted to stay longer and do more, she has to go set another goal or another why, another reason to go after this thing. So next week, we're going to dive into attraction. But what I found is that you can attract all day long. And if you're not converting, then you get discouraged. And you're going to be hearing from an, a, a, a young lady um, next week. I haven't even asked her permission to do this yet, but you're going to be hearing her. Um, she's she's the master of attraction right now. She's bringing on customers like it's going out of style. And I promise you this, and promoters. And I promise you this, she has no she had no idea what she was doing when she started. Um, meaning, if she's bringing on over a hundred customers a month, she had no idea what she was doing when she started. Not even a little bit. But I'm going to interview her next week. If you guys want to learn from her, I think you have a lot to gain. And I don't say the 100 customers to, to intimidate you. Y'all, I do not bring on 100 customers a month. I do not. Do I want to? Yes. Do I? No. I do a pretty good job, though. Once people are interested, they stick around, right? And that's what she's working on now. And so here's the, here's the thing I want you to do is I want you to come in on next week and really take and look into what is she really doing? It's not what she's saying on TikTok. I want to say this again. It's not what she's saying on TikTok. It's not how she's posting on Instagram. Are they factors? They are. But it's what she's really doing. And I'm going to interview her uh, as long as she's able to. I'm pretty sure she is. I've already volunteered her and I haven't asked her yet. But I'm going to interview her because what she's doing is very simple. And she's doing exactly what Kate wrote down. And Kate, if you don't mind putting that in the chat again, she's becoming more of her in front of more people more often. She's being genuinely herself. And, it, and she's amplifying that. And then she has some little adjustments she's going to have to make to go a little further faster um, in what she wants to do. But what I find is the people that find that rhythm are the ones that ultimately have the funnel of people keep coming in. It doesn't have to be social media. This could be out in town. This could be anywhere. So we're going to talk about attraction next week. But I felt this week it'd be best to learn how to tell our story. So I hope to hear from a lot of you. Story, 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 stories. More stories, more stories more stories. And then next week, after we talk about attraction, I'm going to give you a little tips on onboarding, just so you have that in your back pocket. And I promise it's pretty simple. You just have to have the Prove It Pulse app and you can onboard anybody. So um, with that said and done, um, we do have activity calls every single week, three times a week. Um, do we have a schedule, Lee? Luis? Can you throw that in the chat, the schedule of the calls? I just don't want to mess it up. They're all on my phone, but I don't want to mess it up. We'll pulse out again, the activity Zooms. So we have an activity Zoom. So this is about action. Now you can't always get on every one. That's okay. You can't get on this every day. That's okay. Um, remember on Saturdays, the, the company has a training. Mondays, Michael has a huddle call. Thursday, I have this call. On your, You might have some individual team calls going on. Guess what? That could be a lot of calls for a lot of people. Plug in as often as you can. And remember, attraction, tell your story to more people attraction, tell your story to more people. That is the secret to this business. And then after that, we go into, into connect and enroll. Let's see if he got it in the chat. One second. Y'all eyeball the chat quick. It's coming in in a second. Eyeball the chat. Okay. Before we go, who's committed to telling their story 20 times? Who's committed to telling their story 20 times? Does anybody feel like they don't have a good story to tell? I'll take another three minutes here. Does anybody feel like they don't have a good story, like their story sucks? We have a, we have a, a uh, we have a uh, action zoom starting in. That's Kate. That's perfect. We have an action zoom starting in twenty minutes, led by Miss Kate Hignan and, and the team. Tuesday at one p.m. Also one p.m. Eastern time, Standard Time on Tuesday, Thursday at one p.m. are two action calls. Um, so you guys, uh, anybody have, and then Wednesday night. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so write those down. And those are action calls. These are for international and for local. Anybody in the world can, can, can get into this. I wish I had a two-hour lunch, Jennifer. <laughs> yes. Cameron, everybody, everybody hide. Cameron just joined. Everybody hide. Hide. Cameron just joined. Everybody hide. Just kidding. Um, anybody have my product? I like it the best. 
Uh, my product story is best. I like it best. So Christine, that's good. I want you to just think about this. Christine just said something. She said, my product story is best. I like it best. So what's, what that means is that Christine's going to be really good at enrolling customers and really struggling to get promoters, right? Um, I've enrolled almost as many promoters as I had customers. Why? Because I actually joined this for the business. Now, I'm not saying that if that's not the reason you're joined, don't change your story, tell your story. But if you have a hard time talking through, <laughs> Jennifer balls through her story. If you have a hard time talking through the business, then you need to sit down with some pen and paper and write down, why are you doing the business? Like genuinely, why? Kim Johnson, uh, if you guys don't know Kim Johnson, she's married to Zach Johnson, who's a pro golf player. They have the most amazing family, uh, unbelievable relationship. I've been very blessed to spend a lot of time with them and get to know their heart and their passion. And I looked at Kim, I'm like, y'all got some money. Yeah, yeah, I got lots of it, to be honest. Why are you doing this? And she goes, for real? I go, for real. I go, why are you doing this? She's like, I want my name on the board. True story. She goes, she goes, it's always Zach's names up on the board. It's not my name. When we donate to our charity, it's almost always, it's, we put our, both of our names on there, but Zach made the money. She goes, I just, for once, I want it to be Kim Johnson wrote the check. True story. There was something inside of her that she wanted to say, hey, kids and family and loved ones, I want to go do this. And then she had a secondary why. And that secondary why was this. She goes, you know what, listen, I get to travel all over the world, but my friends can't always go with me because they don't have extra money. What if I could help them make extra money so they can come to Hawaii with us? We can relax and enjoy this whole thing. So her why was different. It didn't make it wrong. It didn't make it less valuable. But guess what? She was willing to share that. How many ladies out there or men out there? I'm, my wife was a provider for our family for many years. And I wanted to, I wanted to prove myself too. Does that make sense? I wanted, to, I wanted to become that. And I was able to pay that back to my wife so she could spend more time with her kids. And guess what? She's going to come back at me again. She's like, I'm going to, I'm not, I'm not retired. She's like, I'm coming back. Uh, so my point to that is, is, is you find that reason of why you're doing this business. Is it because you need a cow? Is it because you need a, 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 a furnace? Is it because you need to provide for your family? Is it because you need to provide for your daughter? Is it because you need to retire early? Is it because you need to uh, travel the world? Is it because you need to prove that you can? I just wanted to prove that I can do it. That's okay. Is it because whatever? Um, don't say retire your husbands because you have to ask them if they want to retire first because that's a mistake I get all the time. <laughs> and ladies, I want to retire my husband. I go, do they want to retire? I don't know. I haven't asked him yet. Well, you probably should ask him that question first. So y'all, I appreciate you um, very, very much. Uh, thanks for taking a few minutes um, on Thursday. We're going to be cutting this off. So next week, we're going to be talking about attraction and the keys to attracting. But remember, it's telling your story to more people more often and becoming the best version of yourself. That's our business. It's not more complicated than that. If you think it's about everything else, it's, I promise you, we're going to be, we're going to be misled here. So with that said and done, um, stay tuned. I will be, um, uh, next week we have some really fun things coming for the end of the month of this month. I'll share you with maybe a couple little hints of what they are and, uh, let's have some fun y'all cheers. Happy Thursday. And then in 20 minutes, we have an action zoom on the same channel, an action zoom on the same channel. If you want to stay tuned and get some, get into action, uh, come join us. We'll be doing a little activity zoom for the next 30 minutes. Cheers.